Hello, and welcome to today's Ninja Trader Ecosystem event, UFO Trading Routines to Refine and Confirm Entries and Exits. My name is Juanita, and I am the Ninja Trader Ecosystem representative here in the Denver office. Before we start the webinar, I have a few housekeeping notes. This webinar is presented by Ninja Trader LLC, which is the technology company responsible for developing and supporting the Ninja Trader trading software. Any brokerage related questions should be sent to the Ninja Trader brokerage team using the following phone number or email ad address. Lastly, if you are new to NinjaTrader, please make sure you sign up for a free NinjaTrader demo with real-time data. Our platform is always free for advanced charting, charting, strategy baptism, and trade simulation. You can request a free live demo using the following link. Before I turn the mic over to Jose, it is important to understand that futures foreign currencies and options trading contains substantial risks and is not suitable for every investor. It is possible to lose all funds or more than your initial investment. Risk capital is money that can be lost without jeopardizing one's financial security or lifestyle. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Also, please remember that these training sessions are not a solicitation nor a recommendation, but simply educational in nature. Thank you again for joining us. And without further ado, it's my pleasure to welcome to the Ninja Trader Ecosystem webinar room, Jose. Jose, go ahead and take it away. Thank you so much, Juanita. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending the session today. Um, my name is Jose Blasco. As Juanita said, uh, you can see my email address uh, on the screen in case you need anything uh, after the session is over. Maybe you, you would like to have a copy of the slides or uh, any other question related to what we do or trading. Uh, happy to help. The title for today's event is UFO Trading Routines to Refine and Confirm Entries and Exits for All Methodologies. And that means that we have many things to discuss uh, in around 40 plus minutes of time that we have. So um, my, nat my nature is to be quite fast when I speak. Hopefully that is okay. So we can uh, really take advantage of the time. But if I do go a bit too fast uh, or you have additional questions, please feel free to use the chat box. I will be reading as uh, I run the session. We'll have time for Q&A at the end as well, but probably it's even better if I catch the questions on the fly, especially if they are uh, related to what I am uh, you know, presenting at that moment in time. So. Feel free to work with me, guys. Uh, let's make this a little bit of teamwork, if I may call it this way, instead of just a, you know, a, a one-way conversation. Let's have a conversation between all of us. Before we get started as well, I would like to highlight on the upper, uh, upper left side of the screen uh, a financial disclaimer. Um, it's fairly short, so I would like to request everybody to read it uh, carefully. Basically, what it says here is that the presentation is not for financial advice. The presentation is for educational purposes uh, and for demonstration purposes and so on. Okay, I, I understand that everybody understands, but it's always an important point uh, to, to make. And for everybody to acknowledge, especially if you are new to trading, uh, you know, everybody needs to understand that trading carries uh, um, a collection of risks. And uh, as traders, we need to be prepared uh, before we trade. So anyway, um, agenda for today. So we're gonna talk about introductions. Uh, I'll spend extremely little time just to, to say who I am and uh, point out our company, uh, but very little time from there, we'll start getting into the meat of the matter. We'll talk about identifying the right side of the market. It's a typical thing I've seen throughout the years. If I was to call it a mistake, I would say the biggest mistakes traders we make from time to time, it's to be on the wrong side of the market. So first thing that I want to talk about today, it's how to spot the side of the market where we have a statistical advantage. So we'll talk about how we do that. Once we do that, we're gonna use those UFOs, which obviously for, for the ones of you that have never seen UFOs, I need to explain that with more detail and I will. So we need to understand what are those UFOs in trading and how can you use the UFOs if you are a purist UFO trader, even though later I will also talk about uh, combining it with other methods uh, to enhance it even more uh, your trading uh, quality. Um, removing subjectivity is such an important part of trading because if our action happens to be subjective, uh, so there is a there is a component of uh, there is a random component uh, within what we do, and uh, obviously that will lead to you know maybe making profits out of being lucky, or maybe taking losses out of not being lucky instead of you know acting systematically with a method which you know, you repeat and repeat and repeat, knowing what to expect. So that uh, in order to trade with consistency and, and be systematic, 
obviously our methods need to be objective. We need to get rid of subjectivity and many trading techniques out there, um, you know, well-known techniques actually, techniques that sometimes you read in books and so on, um, from a concept point of view, they are very powerful, but then from an implementation point of view, many times traders will add subjectivity to how they do it. So I'm going to talk about today how to remove that subjectivity. So then, apart from being more systematic, we can actually add precision to entries and exits, which is key. Not only to be proud of what we do when we trade and be, you know, like, wow, I just nailed it. I, I bought exactly when it was the right time or I sold exactly when it was the right time. Uh, well, let's face it, that's quite difficult to do, isn't it? But adding as much precision as possible, it's very important from the risk management point of view. If every time you buy or, or sell, you were to save yourself a few ticks, a few cents, a few pips, depending on what you trade. And when you were to reach your targets, you were to maximize the targets by a few more ticks, a few more pips. Uh, and you were to do that every single day at the end of the year, it would make a massive difference, isn't it? So adding precision uh, has a great impact and we need to discuss it. Knowing what to expect from the markets you trade is also tremendously important in the sense that um, the quality you may get out of a market, let's say, for example, the S&P 500 futures may be different than another market, let's say, for example, the Euro futures. Uh, and these, by, by the way, may vary, through, may vary through time, but there are many components, could be volatility, could be uh, institutional interest. There are certain components of trading that uh, we know we, we need to have ways on how to assess those components before we even trade. So we know what to expect. And maybe you even decide, okay, I'm not trading the euro this month. Uh, Again, this is just a random statement. I'm, I'm not suggesting to not to try the euro this month, but you get my point. So we need to understand what to expect. Uh, once we understand what to expect, this has a direct implication on enhancing the trader's confidence. Why? Because if you know a market is expected to have a reliability of a certain level, and that may imply that worst case, you get five losses in a row. So let's say you got three losses in a row. Well, it's not very pleasant, but you know, uh, it's relatively normal if that market produces up to five losses in a row, uh, you know, based on, you know, a collection of, of trades that you may have backtested. So um, again, understanding what to expect is key. So you don't get emotional in, in the sense of, for example, being fearful or developing revenge trading uh, action or the opposite. Maybe you get, you know, too greedy, you get too overconfident. So again, um, management of emotions is, is critical. And finally, uh, and I'm getting now down to the bottom part of the list. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, the UFOs, but not only from a purist point of view, but also how to combine it if, let's say, you're a Fibonacci trader, how to combine it if you like to trade Bollinger Band pierces and trade mean reversion. So again, we'll talk about different methodologies because, let's face it, there are many, many ways on how to trade, and many of them are very adequate ways on how to trade. So, um, you know, we, we'll talk about um, how to do that. I have a bonus for you. Actually, I have two bonuses for you, which I will mention uh, a bit later in the presentation. So stay tuned. Um, um, I believe you will appreciate it. I'll, I'll get back to that in a moment. And again, questions and answers, um, we can do that along the way. And certainly we can also keep a few at the end, uh, whatever you like, you, you would like uh, to, to do. Anyway, so introduction, my name is Jose, uh, Jose Blasco to be specific. Uh, I am a trader. And what do I trade? Uh, I trade all assets. Okay, I trade uh, derivatives is what I like the most, obviously options and futures. They also trade equities, currencies, cryptocurrencies as well. So I am exposed to various markets, various styles from long-term to very short-term intraday to anywhere in between swing trades and things of that sort. And the reason why is because Trading is my life and every asset got pros and cons, right? So maybe, you know, taking a long-term trade, a long-term investment is more efficient with an options, uh, an options play versus maybe a quick, short uh, trade intraday. The best way to do it is probably futures. So again, um, that's me. That's what I do, okay? And I will demonstrate a little bit of how I trade during today. Our company, Trade With UFOs, well, obviously uh, the website tradewithufos.com got UFOs in, in it, in the name. So what are those UFOs, which is also the title of the presentation? Well, UFO stands for on-field orders. And on the chart, it looks like, uh, they look like flying saucers, which, you know, um, that's another reason why we call them UFOs. Uh, but really what they represent when they are red flying saucers, they represent sell on-field orders, 
and when they are green, the flying saucers, they represent by on-field orders. The beauty of those UFOs is that um, they help uh, very much to set entries, exits for all trading styles, for all markets. They can be used by themselves. They can be combined with other methods. Again, you, you'll see me do that during the presentation. So if you're curious to know a bit more about that, uh, just make a note of our website and you can uh, go take a look after uh, this presentation is over. Now, um, I'm going to answer two questions in one shot because I, I had a pretty long list of items that we need to cover today. So I'm going to be very pragmatic on how I address the various topics. So I make sure that we cover everything and we don't leave anything. So with this chart, if you look, um, first, you can see some UFOs, green and red, but you can also see a histogram, which is blue and red in the bottom part. So what is all of that, right? So let me answer all of this um, from, from two different angles. So the first angle, I want to talk about the UFOs. And notice that some of those UFOs on the chart, they are green color. When they are green color, they represent buy on field orders. So what's the expectation? Well, because we expect on field orders to on field orders to be available where the UFO is, then the expectation is that if price was to ever come back from whatever it is to that price point, 1718 we would expect the on-field orders to start, to start kicking in, getting filled, and therefore the market to move in the opposite direction. That would be the expectation. Therefore, those green UFOs could be used for entries when going long. The opposite is true if we look at the red UFOs. If price was to ever rally to this red UFO and hit 80.75, we would expect the sell on-field orders to kick in and the selling pressure bringing the prices back down uh, being then 80.75, an ideal entry point for a short opportunity. Okay. Now, uh, if this concept is clear, uh, what you may notice as well on the chart is that there are multiple UFOs. And of course, there are multiple UFOs. And if you change time frames, you can even uncover other UFOs. All those UFOs are orders that are waiting to get filled that are identified by our technology, which, by the way, is patented. Now, having said that, not all UFOs may be tradable. Why? Because um, while we have the green and the red UFOs with the buy on field orders and the sell on field orders, we also need to be aware of the market climate, which is the histogram I got in the bottom part of the screen. Why is the market climate relevant? Well, because let's say a large market play player added those UFOs, right? Those on field orders, and therefore they are waiting for price to come to 79.18 for them to buy and the on field orders are waiting to get filled. Well, that it's perfectly valid, assuming the market conditions, which I'm calling the climate, is prone for that to remain. And one important statement I want to pronounce today, and I'm going to repeat it twice, I'll say it slowly, so this is, I give you time to digest because it's very important, is that when we are dealing with up markets, up climates, when we are dealing with up climates, the buy on field orders, they tend to be added where the sell on field orders, they tend to be canceled. And the opposite is true. So I'll repeat it in the opposite direction. When we are dealing with a down climate, when the climate is down, when the histogram is red and the climate is down. So what tends to happen is that the buy on field orders tend to be canceled and sell on field orders tend to be added. So in other words, uh, as a trader, uh, while I could go ahead and take all the trades with all the UFOs, and I could, this may be my trading plan. The reality is that you probably do better by respecting the market environment, the market climate. Um, you may call it the trend, even though the auto climate that you see on the bottom part of the screen is a bit more complex than that. Uh, but you may you may want to think of the trend if you wish, just simplify it a bit. So uh, in a in a in a non-trending market, uh, more buyers will tend to join in. And therefore, buy on fillers tend to be added. Well, well, the sell orders are either being canceled or they are only being used for profit taking. And therefore, the quantity of the sell orders is less than the quantity of the buy orders. That's why the market keeps going higher. That's why an uptrend may develop. May develop. So, in other words, uh, my preference when I trade with the UFOs is when the climate is blue, when it's an up climate, then I focus on being buyer. I, I go long. When the climate is red, when the climate is red color, uh, I focus on uh, being short and therefore 
I use the red UFOs for my entries, okay? So summary, autoclimate assesses statistical data in order to understand what's smarter to do. Is it time to do nothing and not to trade? Is it time to go long or is it time to go short? What type of suggestion are you given by the technology from a point of view of, do you have a statistical advantage by doing something and what is that, going long or going short? Once you get that question answered, it's time to then use the auto UFOs, which are gonna help us to identify the location of the unfilled orders. And therefore, knowing the location of the unfilled orders, in this case, 80.75 or 79.18 on the chart, in this chart example, knowing that location of the unfilled orders help us to uh, plan our entry prices when either going long or short, as well as the target uh, as well as the target prices in a way that is optimal. That's the whole uh, purpose behind these two technologies to be combined. Okay. And um, yes, Mike, I'm just reading you. I will uh, I will uh, tune my speed a little bit down. Thank you for that. Uh, it's my normal tendency. I am very passionate about this. Uh, and at the same time, I, I understand this. This is obviously one of my weaknesses when I present. Uh, sorry about that. Very good. Uh, Sean, I am assuming, of course, that this strategy can be used within Ninja Trader 8. Correct. Correct. I'm going to move from the slides in a moment and I will use real time charts. Before I do that, I just want to cover a few more slides. So we speak the same language before I go live. So this is all well understood. Okay. Great. So here's another example of UFOs in action. So let's say you were planning to buy, you would want to focus on the green UFO. Why? Because again, the expectation is when the price comes to the green UFO, buy on field orders kick in, and then we expect price to go higher. So you would want to go long using that UFO. Now, if you buy and now price gets all the way to the red, when it comes to the red, the expectation is that it's gonna fall. So this price point would be an ideal price point to take profits. So that would be what we call your target UFO. So long entry would be 78.41. The stop would go below 78.21. And your target would be 78.98. In this particular example, this is a two minute time frame of crude oil futures. This is an example of an intraday trader. Uh, of course, you could use the UFOs, and I will show you that later with larger time frames as well, all the way to weekly and monthly time frames if you would like. That makes you a long term investor. You could do that, and you can go as low as tick charts and volume charts, I will I will show you that as well, okay? So uh, the technology is intelligent. Uh, we are obviously in the era of AI, isn't it? And the technology is intelligent and adapts to the time frame and the market that you use because let's face it, not all markets have the same levels of liquidity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, long entry price, uh, uh, 78.41 stop below. Uh, the, seven, the UFO, that would be 78.20, target 78.98. That would give us a, a trade plan where we are risking 21 ticks in order to produce 57 ticks, assuming we are right. And that would imply a reward to risk ratio of 2.721, which that probably um, you know makes happy the majority of traders uh, with us today, uh, unless you have a, a plan which is uh, more demanding, okay? And let me take a look at the questions. Uh, Jean, uh, do on-field orders indicate pending buying or selling? What if the market does not reach the zone? Good, yes. So the answer is yes. It, it indicates pending uh, buying and selling. And what if the price does not reach the zone? So then uh, the answer is you wait, uh, which we all know that as uh, traders, uh, patience is such a, a important virtue, isn't it? We have to wait to buy at the right price. We have to wait to sell at the right price. Uh, and this applies to all techniques. Uh, in this case, you can see I am waiting for a retracement into the UFO, ready to buy, expecting price to move in the opposite direction. You may, be, you may tell me, I don't want to buy a retracement. What I want to buy is I want to buy a breakout. So then you would need to wait for price to break out above of the UFO, and this would be your entry. That would be another way to approach the use of the UFOs, by the retracement or by the breakout, or short the retracement or short the breakout. In both cases, you still need to wait. As traders, we always have a period of time where we should be waiting. And to be honest, um, waiting is one of the most difficult things to learn and probably one of the most important things to do because the moment you're waiting, if you do it right, 
then you are avoiding the bad trades, waiting for the good trades. So this is uh, something very, very important, and that's a very good question, John. So, uh, thank you so much. Uh, does this work on the S&P on a one-minute time frame or range charts? Yes, Nick, uh, and I will show you that in a moment. Okay, wonderful. So um, this was the end result. Of course, this is a beautiful trade that worked well. Not all trades work. Obviously, this is trading. Uh, we don't have a crystal ball. It's all about statistics. So that's why, I, in my example, I was protecting the trade with a stop order. And certainly, uh, while this is not financial advice, I would certainly recommend that if you trade, you always uh, protect yourself. You have a contingency plan by either hedging or having stops or using options against your trade or whatever you're going to do. But you know, don't, do not be naked, okay? Uh, because that that uh, costs a lot of money, okay? Uh, this is another view of the UFOs. I'm about to show you all of this inside Ninja Trader uh, live, okay, guys? So bear with me for a few more minutes. But basically, this is the way on how you can also spot the UFOs in a table format, where you can see uh, the red UFOs, the green UFOs, and how far are you from the next UFO in ATR multiples? So notice that this particular market is 3.97 ATRs away for you to get to a buying price, where uh, this market is negative ATR, negative 0 0.33. That would mean that, uh, in this case, CVX is already inside the green UFO because you have a negative ATR value. So you could, on Ninja Trader using the market analyzer, you can actually sort those columns, you can set alarms, uh, alerts, all sorts of things, uh, to make your life easier when looking for opportunities and not to miss the trades. And by the way, in this screenshot, you can see that while earlier I was using crude oil, uh, which is a futures contract, in this case, I'm looking at stocks, uh, Apple, Amgen, uh, American Express. So those are stocks, they are equities. And um, what I'm trying to say is that you could apply this technology to all markets, including over-the-counter markets, such as spot forex, cryptocurrencies, um, even the markets that are not trading in an exchange could be assessed with the use of our technology. Okay. Okay. Great. So I'm about to move now to, to Ninja Trader. Okay. Uh, before, I just want to show you a few uh, uh, URLs, a few co a, a few um, links. Uh, I'm also going to give you the QR codes in case instead of typing a link, uh, you prefer to scan the QR code with your phone, which saves you time. So uh, be ready. I'm going to give you four codes, four links, because as I said before, I have a bonus for you, right? Actually, I said I have two. So be ready to uh, to make note of a few of a few links. The moment I'm done with those links, we will jump into the charts, and I want to show you two two different types of applications: UFO purist applications, and also UFO techniques that enhance other methods. And I'm going to use these two type of demonstrations to talk about many more things all together. Uh, again, to take maximum advantage of the time that we have together uh, today. Okay. Uh, more questions here. Are we able to see historic plots? Yes, you could. Uh, obviously, with uh, with Ninja, you can use the backtesting functionality. You, need. you can do your bar replay and so on. So you can actually uh, see it in action. Yes. And, and uh, something I didn't mention, I will show you that live. You actually have the, the performance stats on the screen. You, you get to see uh, percentages of success ratios and everything on the screen. I will show you that in a moment. Anyway, so first thing I wanted to show you is that the technology I'm discussing, which I'm about to demonstrate live, is something that you could find on our website. Uh, there are different ways on how to subscribe to it. You have monthly subscriptions. You have yearly subscriptions. It is uh, something for me to note that the yearly subscriptions come with two courses for free. On our website, you will find futures courses, uh, stock courses, forex courses, crypto courses, backtesting courses, trading plan courses, trading psychology courses, many courses. So you get two courses for free if you subscribe yearly. If you do it monthly, uh, you get the technology, but not the courses. We also have lifetime subscriptions, which are available from time to time only because those lifetime subscriptions, actually they are uh, NFT memberships. So we don't sell that on the website. We sell that on OpenSea.io. If you are into digital assets, if you are into crypto, if you are into NFTs, probably you are thinking pixelated uh, pictures of monkeys. That is not what I'm talking about here. I am talking about a subscription NFT, which means that uh, it's, a, it's a digital contract, it's a smart contract that you purchase, and that gives you the right to have lifetime access to auto UFOs and auto climate for Ninja Trader. You get a course, and also you get a copy of our book uh, stored on the blockchain 
with a book uh, reader app. So it's, it's a pretty cool thing to do. Just keep in mind that those lifetime subscriptions are not always available. Sometimes they will, sometimes they won't, sometimes it's an auction, sometimes it's just, you know, a straight price, 1000 Matic, which is the currency. Um, if when you want it, it's not there, feel free to email us and we'll see what we can do, okay? Um, very good. Uh, the win rate is going to be ranging between, uh, depending on the markets and the time frames, and I will illustrate that live in just a second. The win rates are going to be ranging between 60 plus percent to 70 something, 80, 80 something, depending again, the markets and the time frames. Okay, so again, in a moment, I'm going to show you that live. Uh, before I do that, last summary of auto UFOs and also your bonus. Auto UFOs is an add on designed to enhance trading performance, it adds precision when planning entries and exits, eliminating subjectivity, spending less time looking for trades. It assists traders to trade mechanically with more confidence and less emotions. So it improves consistency. It can be applied to all assets, all time frames, and it can be used by itself or combined with other methods. So this is kind of like, in a nutshell, everything I said so far, and now I cannot wait to demonstrate that. Uh, your bonus, I got two bonuses for you guys. Bonus number one is the auto climate, which is such an important tool. You can get it for free. Uh, on our website, if you go to tradewithyourfo.com slash apps, you will see that we charge $8 one time to get auto climate. Well, guess what? If you use the coupon code claim eight, make sure you make a note. If you use the coupon code claim eight, then you have it for free. Okay, so it's gonna be totally free and it's for life and that's it. And now auto climate will tell you when is it smart to be a buyer? When is it smart to be a seller based on statistics? Again, in a moment, I'm gonna illustrate that live. And then the second bonus I have for you guys is a book, okay? We have a trading book. Um, uh, it uses Forex as an asset, but it's applicable to futures and stocks as well. Um, I mean, let's face it, everything that we trade is a currency. Even when you trade futures, you trade points and points are dollars. So uh, the, the book is applicable, the book, has won uh, three uh, awards on Amazon as a uh, number one new release in three categories. Um, so I'm pretty sure you will enjoy it. Uh, you will want to go to trade with you, trade with you slash smash words and use the code XW56N. And with that, you will be able to make the book free and you can download it and you can use it. You can certainly also go to Amazon and buy it on paper if you prefer to read on paper, but that wouldn't be free, okay? Um, so um, last time, and I'm, uh, and I'm going back to, um, um, to Ninja Trader with the live charts, okay? So your auto climate, in case you didn't have time, here is your, co here is your code, claim number eight, claim eight, and you find it on our website, tradewithyourforce.com slash apps. That's make it, that makes it totally free for life. Um, next one, the book, you go to tradewithyourfo.com slash smash words, and then you use the coupon code XW56N, and that will make your book free. And then you, you just uh, download your, your book electronically and you have it, okay? Uh, uh, AB, uh, yes, we do have a trading room. You can find it on our website as well. If you go to tradewithyourfo.com slash live, you will see us there, okay? And you can also check our YouTube channel, there are many videos when we trade live, they are there already. Anyway, with all of this said, I am now moving to NinjaTrader. Uh, and here you can see NinjaTrader. Now we are looking at real-time charts. <clears throat> I'm gonna take a sip of water, by the way, if you don't mind. And we are gonna start uh, discussing a few aspects and look at some trades and, and do some analysis together. So the first thing that I have in front of uh, in front of us all on the screen, uh, repeat the price for the system. You mean the coupon code? So the coupon code would be claim eight uh, when you go to uh, trade with UFOs. I'm just writing it on the on the chat box. Okay, trade with UFOs.com slash apps. Okay. That would be the coupon code. I believe this is what you, you needed, John. Let me know if that's not the case. So um, when it comes to um, when it comes to what we have on the screen, I have three components here. On, on the upper left, I have the UFOs in table format. Uh, on the bottom left, I have an alerts log, which is alerting me of a, a series of conditions 
I am approaching an EMA, a new UFO form, I am approaching a UFO. So there are multiple conditions here, as you can see, that are being highlighted, which that, you know, the market now basically, of course, they are not moving. So nothing is changing here. But during market hours, you are given, you are being given alerts. So it makes your uh, identity, your 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 life easier because I, 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 uh, opportunities that are forming are being notified to you real time, so you don't miss trades. Okay. Uh, earlier today, we see a great example here: uh, trading crude oil in a 15-minute time frame. Okay? So this is a 15-minute time frame of crude oil. You can see here on the upper part, 15 minutes. Crude oil, and you can see here there was a beautiful UFO. Uh, then price came back to the UFO, and this is the entry short that I was talking about uh, with a protective stop above. Okay, so this is how we we tackle the entries. We wait for price to retrace inside of a UFO. That's my favorite way of how to do it. Stop goes on the other side, and then the opposing UFO would be your target. Which in this case, of course, uh, you would have not reached the target. The market closed, and you you would have to close the trade uh, manually or with a with a with a with an instruction, automated instruction on Ninja. So the trade is closed before uh, the market closes, right? Uh, but mm, the idea would be in this trade, you would be risking that amount of money in order to make that amount of money, okay? So the white space on the screen is the profit margin, which is the space between UFO, how much you make, and the space inside the UFO is your entry. And of course, if you're wrong, the size of the UFO is then the size of your loss. So you're risking that in order to make this and then you may use one contract at a time or 10 contracts at a time. That depends on your uh, risk management plan, of course. So now, uh, in this case, uh, I have the UFOs plotted here. Uh, you guys were asking about um, performance stats. So I'm looking at uh, the indicators here. And here, there is an indication where each I can show, check mark, show UFO stats. If I click OK, this is gonna give me a number and it's on the upper left side of the screen. Let me zoom in. So you can, on the upper right side, in this case, you can see that 64.29% of those trades uh, produced uh, the desired outcome. What is the desired outcome? The desired outcome means uh, every time price comes to the red, it drops all the way to a green UFO. And every time price comes to a green UFO, then it goes to the, rival what we call the rival which is the opposing red ufo so that number 64 percent tells you how often price travels from ufo to ufo uh, obviously if the distance between the ufos is great like now so you are risking that to make this and you do that 64 percent of the times so this is a you know a pretty lucrative uh, methodology having said that let's be realistic it's not always like that. There are times where the UFOs are very near. Let's pretend for a minute that there was a green UFO here. So if there was a green UFO here, which that sometimes will happen, and price comes to the red and you short, okay, so great, you are risking this to make this. So this is kind of like a one-to-one -one now instead of like a five-to-one, it's a one-to-one. -one. So uh, the market is the boss. Sometimes the market will produce opportunities with UFOs far away from each other. Sometimes the market will provide opportunities where the UFOs close to each other, and when th when that's the case, uh, you know you may want to go ahead and trade a different market. Um, you don't want to force a trade, and certainly we have to respect respect market data. If there are no unfilled orders, or they are near, or they are far, this is something that obviously is out of our control. The market dictates and uh, provides that for us. Our job as traders is to adapt to what the market is offering and take the good trades and put on the side the less good trades. What is the refresh rate? Will the UFO disappear after touch? No, uh, the technology is quite intelligent. So what happens is that um, as long as the algo understands that the quantity of unfilled orders is still significant, and significant, uh, it's, a, it's a term which uh, within the technology is defined because each market is different. Um, the liquidity on crude oil is much less compared to the liquidity on the S&P futures. So what is a significant amount of orders well this is calculated by by the technology directly but as long as you, you can see here for example this is a great example price came inside the ufo and, and turn for this to happen unfilled orders had to get filled for crude oil to fall but the technology still understands that there are still many 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 unfilled orders at this price point and therefore the ufo is still plotted the moment the technology understands 
that the quantity of unfilled orders is not good enough, is not relevant, is not uh, gonna add an edge for us traders, then the UFO would be uh, erased from the screen and it will not show uh, as a plotted element. Okay, so um, so that's that's uh, how it goes. Yes, I will move in a moment to uh, to the S&P uh, futures for sure. Um, <coughs> let me do it now. So crude oil is giving us 64%. If I move to the S&P futures, so at yes, it's, it's taking a little bit of time to load for whatever reason. So notice here, uh, the performance stat is different, 59%, okay? This varies through times. It has a lot to do with what's going on in the markets at this moment in time. Okay, what's going on in the markets at this moment in time. Uh, also, it depends on the nature of each market. See, for example, if I look at gold, 52%, it changes, but it also depends on the time frames. So maybe instead of the 15 minute time frame, I look at, let's say, a five minute time frame. And now it went up to 57% instead of 52%. So um, keep that in mind. Again, the market is the boss. I, I wish I could control the market, but I cannot. So the most I can do is to adapt to what's available. This is what's available in the market. And the, um, the amount of times orders get canceled by the large market participants that trade those markets using whatever techniques they use to trade those markets. The way they do it implies a performance stat, in this case of 57% for gold or uh, if I go back to the S&P on a five-minute time frame, uh, we are talking about 63% performance stat. So you can see how these things change dynamically per market and, you know, changes, you know, a little bit uh, every day, every week, because markets, you know, obviously change their market, their conditions, and it has a reflect, it reflects on, on uh, the order flow and the orders. So now, how can you use this? I mean, oh, let, let me phrase it differently. How do I like the most using this? So, uh, and by the way, I haven't, I haven't said anything about auto climate yet, which it's, it's critical. But one way I love to use this is set my entries where the UFO is with the stop below. This is what I said. Set my target where the, the opposing the rival UFO is. Okay, so entry stop and target. But then when price comes here, and let's say I buy two futures contracts and price now starts moving my way. So, you know, uh, if, if I ask you the question, have you ever seen price move you away for a little bit and then stop you out? Of course, that could happen, especially if there is a change of climate, right? Maybe you enter a trade, everything is good. Next thing you know, there is a news, something happens, and there is a violent change of direction. So in order to avoid that and to increase my performance, something I love to do, and there is another, re another reason which I'm about to say, is I like to set myself two targets. So what I call a safety target here, and what I call a final target there. So what happens is that the moment that market moves to a one-to-one, -one, which that is quite likely going to happen. So if I bought two contracts, I close one. So now I am left with a risk-free trade because if I made that amount of money and then I get stopped out, I lose the same amount than the amount I made. So I cannot lose anymore. And now if I go to the final target, so now congratulations. But what's the other reason why I like to do this? The other reason why I like to do this is because the moment I get to my safety target, which of course is gonna happen sooner than getting to the final target because it's nearer, I can now go ahead and take other trades in parallel. So I'm long the S&P, now I'm gonna find a trade to go long the Euro or the crude oil or whatever, or short gold. And even though I'm taking multiple trades in parallel, I am not adding a risk to my portfolio because every time I add a trade, I make sure I reach my safety target first. Um, so this is very powerful, at least, you know, I, I love to trade this way. This is just me, I guess, as well, because trading is very particular. Um, but it's, it's definitely a, a great advantage to approach it this way. And now next thing you know, those performance stats can be improved thanks to a dynamic type of approach when it comes to risk management. Okay? Um, by the way, you can see those stats plotted in a table format here. So notice how different markets will report different levels of performance stats, which again, it's normal. It's the reality of the markets. Not all markets are as reliable, just like not all markets are as volatile. And it's great to know before you trade, because if you know what to expect, and we talked about this at the beginning of the presentation. So if you know what to expect from the markets that you trade, 
So then uh, you're going to have an easier time managing your trading emotions, which obviously uh, it's something critical. So now um, I need to um, I need to change to another uh, desktop, uh, another uh, layout. A little bit more, a little bit easier. Okay, I got more stuff in here. Um, the reason why I want to change to this desktop, um, and let me look at crude oil, for example. And I will look at the right time frame for crude oil. Okay, crude oil and crude oil. So this is a much more sophisticated desktop. I started from uh, giving you a simpler explanation, but notice now how I am combining here the auto climate with the UFOs, right? But on top of that, I am using tick charts on crude oil and volume charts on crude oil and a two minute time frame on crude oil. And all of these combined with a 15 minute time frame for me to check the climate. So what do I like to do? Well, what I like to do is to check what is my climate condition. In this case, it's red. So you are supposed to be a seller. Right? But, uh, statistically speaking, you have a statistical advantage by being a seller. So what do you do? Well, you look for UFOs in a lesser, in a lower time frame, because the lower time frame UFOs are going to be tinier, and if the UFOs are tinier, you're going to be more precise with your entries and your exits. Now, of course, if the distance between entry and stop is very little, you also increase the probability of a stop out. So how do you, how do I mitigate that? Well, first. By having the climate in my favor, I minimize the probability of a stop off. Second, in this case, I don't have, but let's say I had a red UFO here, and I had a red UFO here, and I had a red UFO here, and this is a tick time, tick time frame, volume time frame, and minute time frame. If I see UFOs in all sorts of time frames, which are small time frames, but all time frames reconfirm that on field orders are available, I'm going to have. Um, an easy time. I'm going to have a, you know, a, a confident time getting uh, into trades, um, um, you know, in that particular direction. Is that, does that make sense? So I'm trying to um, combine it all because trading is a balancing act. So I'm putting myself in the right side of the market, trying to minimize my risk by being as precise as I, ca as I can with my entries and my exits. And in the meantime, to increase my uh, my odds, I'm using the UFOs, of course, but also I'm making sure those UFOs are available in multiple time frames to make sure I got as many odds in my favor as possible. Um, we are basically um, reaching the time where the session needs to needs to conclude. Um, it's difficult sometimes uh, because um, I have so many things to to show you guys, and I'm so passionate about this. But uh, of course, I'm gonna have to respect the time, so I'm gonna I'm gonna be concluding the session in just a moment. I just wanna show one last thing, which I said I would, which is how you can also combine. Uh, for example, this is a five minute time frame of crude oil. Uh, how can you combine other trading techniques with the UFOs? So, for example, let's say you are a Fibonacci trader, and you love to trade retracement, right? And for example, um, you know, so you see. Um, that you know the, the, there was this move to the downside and now as price is coming back up you want to take a trade so what you could do is you could draw your fibs right and for example you can see here that there is a ufo located at 7830 where that ufo is lining up perfectly with a fib line where all of those fib lines are in the middle of nowhere which they could work for sure but they are in the middle of nowhere but that one that is lining up with a UFO is a is a is a fib line that uh, I guess is common sense would have higher probability of working well because apart from on-field orders may be added because Fibonacci traders enter. On top of that, you already have on-field orders waiting to get filled. So if the market was to ever come here and the on-fillers kick in and price starts falling, guess what? This is going to be a super motivation for the Fibonacci trader to come in with a confirmation expecting them to the trade to work as a reaction to the fib line so in other words you can use other trading techniques could be fibs could be bollinger bands uh, this is going to be my last demonstration so for example you can plot a bollinger band um let me make the lines to be a bit thicker so we see that better so three and three for example so this is a bollinger band and 
so for example, um, well, in this case, this chart is not too inviting for anything that looks too close. Uh, here we go. So like, how do you feel about shorting with the red UFO? Well, if price comes into the, this red UFO now, which is above the Bollinger Band, well, every time or many times when, when price co goes above a Bollinger Band, you have a reversion to the mean, above the Bollinger Band reversion to the mean. So if you have a pierce of this Bollinger Band going all the way to the UFO, you may get a reversion back to the mean, and this could be your target. So again, you could use different techniques uh, that are very powerful, but often imply some objectivity because you want to short outside the band, where where do you place your stop, right? Or where exactly are you going to short outside the band? Like five ticks outside the band or 10 ticks above the band? So again, there may be some subjectivity where the moment you turn on the UFOs, all of this um, goes away, okay? So um, there doesn't seem to be any way to order the climate on your website. Uh, yes, yes, there is. Uh, look, this is this is our website. Here we go. So when you go to apps, you just scroll down, and here you have platforms, Ninja Trader, and you just click on Get Started. And the moment you click on Get Started, so then you just insert the coupon code uh, Claim Eight, and those eight dollars one-time fee will go away, and then you have it. Okay, that's how you do it, Tom. Okay, hopefully that helps. And anyway, so I'm just gonna conclude my presentation here. Um, uh, Abby, I see your message. If you don't mind, uh, just shoot uh, an email uh, for me and uh, I will see if uh, um, we, we can help. I will ask our support team to help you with that. So, Jose at, okay, why is it that? Sorry for that. Uh, and Juanita, I am about to pass the screen back to you. Sorry for these five minutes of delay from my end, but this is my email address. It's just to remind everybody, if there is any question or um, uh, Abe, you wanted to have access to our thread room, et cetera. So uh, just email me and I'll be happy to help. I'll, I'll get my support team to help you or uh, help you myself directly, okay? It's been, my pleasure to be here, uh, Juanita and Ninja Trader. Uh, thank you very much for having me uh, today, uh, joining you and being part of this amazing community. And I thank you all, especially guys for attending. Uh, thank you so much. And I hope this was uh, something that was uh, of help uh, to you. Take care, everybody. Thank you again, Jose, for taking the time to share with us today. If you enjoyed today's session, we hope we will see everyone in future events. We'd like to remind you the information provided in this was that of Trade Addictive PTE LTD and not of Ninja Trader. All information was for educational purposes and should not be construed as trading advice. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we hope to see everyone in future webinars. Happy trading from the Ninja Trader ecosystem. Thank you again, and have a wonderful day. Bye, everyone.